Welcome back to Harbaugh. More now on the IRS scandal that has outraged so many across the country. To recap what we now know, the agency has admitted to unfairly targeting conservative groups seeking tax exemptions as nonprofits. Congress, the Treasury Department's Inspector General, and the IRS itself are among those investigating the matter. And those who were unfairly targeted are weighing legal action. An issue here is how the IRS looked for groups it thought might be violating the rules. It did so with an apparent political motive, essentially handpicking groups that had terms like Tea Party or Patriot in their applications. Of the 300 groups the IRS singled out for heightened review, about 25% of them featured those words in their paperwork, according to agency officials. In the end, none of them were found to have violated any rules. In fact, not a single one of them have had their applications turned down to this point, although some reviews are still ongoing. If the words Tea Party and Patriot are what you're screening for, it's hardly a surprise our next guest was one of those targeted. Joining me now is Jenny Beth Martin, the co-founder of the nonprofit Tea Party Patriots. Also with us is Joy Reid, MSNBC political analyst with TheGrio.com. Thank you very much, Jenny Beth, for joining us. According to, well, let me just get your personal. How, how did you know you were targeted for review by the IRS as a Patriot group, as a Tea Party group? Thanks for having me on again, Chris. And we saw in, well, we saw that it was taking months and months and months to get answers from the IRS. And they've been stringing us along for years. In 2012, at the beginning of 2012, we got a, 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 like an eight page letter from the IRS. Several other groups did around the country asking for things like the, our Facebook post and comments on our Facebook page, all the emails we've ever sent, the, the names of congressmen and senators that any of our supporters from around the country have talked to a lot of the information that they were asking for was completely completely really none of their business and completely intrusive well tell me about it from your point of view are you a political organization uh, we are a um, nonprofit organization f designed to do grassroots lobbying. That means we do legislative action, we, and that's what a 501c4 is for. And then we also have applied for a 501c3 status so that we can educate on things like the Constitution and the right. Bill of Rights, which this IRS well, you, report, I mean, is, they're saying I'm they sorry. don't even want us to do that. Do you take sides in elections? We have only stood up for our issues. We've never endorsed any candidates in the primary. In fact, the vast majority of the work that we do, the vast majority is related to the issues like Obamacare, the debt, the overspending. Well, I've been minute. on your show Obamacare, talking about it. In opposing Obamacare, do you think that was a political move? It was about the legislation. It wasn't a. It wasn't about a political move. It was about what we thought was happening with the bill and the law moving through Congress. I understand that. Once the bill was passed, did you stop attacking Obamacare? Since it was a policy question, it wasn't political. If you kept attacking Obamacare after it was the law of the land, then I'd question whether you were doing it as a campaign issue. No, it wasn't a campaign issue, and we were out there in front of the Supreme Court when it was being heared out in front of the Supreme Court. Again, that's what we're allowed to do as a 501c4, and it wasn't for campaign purposes. It's because that is what how you um, appeal laws, if you want yeah. to, in this country. But once the law was approved by, it went through and it was approved by, reviewed by the Supreme Court, did you continue to attack Obamacare on through the November election? We have focused on Obamacare, and of course, going into the elections last year, it was not as large of an issue as we would have liked it to but be. But why did you, if, the, still, if you're not political, why did you keep hitting the issue going into an election? Because we're if legislatively it already been by the focused, Court? Chris. It's legislation, and we're legislatively focused, and that's what we do. We weren't talking about candidates. And in fact, mm -hmm. when we talked about the law going into the election, we didn't even call it Obamacare. We said the president's health care law, because our attorney said that if we used Obama, in the name Obama, that would cause problems for our, pending, for our pending status. Joy Reid, thank you for joining us tonight. My concern, I've, I've voiced it loudly, this is catnip for the hard right. It says the government's the enemy, the government's out to get you, the helicopters are next, we're going to come get your guns, confiscate what you have, and perhaps take you away to a concentration camp. And it's not just paranoia if you have this kind of evidence. I think it is paranoia most of the time. But if this thing gets out to be fact, if it's clear they were going through returns like this young lady, this lady's uh, returns, her organization's returns, if they're going around systematically looking for the right wing, it could be the left wing next year. That's my view. I think the president was right. I think he should have been tougher. 
Well, Chris, uh, you know, I think there's a couple things here just to impact. First of all, um, obviously, the people in that Cincinnati office—and we're not talking about people in Washington. We're talking about people in Cincinnati, Ohio. No, but so Cincinnati was clear. tasked with this, this nationally. Right. No, so they had the national—you can't, you can't pigeonhole it in Cincinnati. This was the national effort to go through the review of these organizations. This is where it was tasked. One place. So, it's a, so you can't say it's a local operation somewhere. Go ahead. Right, but these were low-level staffers in Cincinnati. I think that the problem here is the attempt to immediately go from that to the White House and say, well, you know what? The White no, House was going that. after. No, not you. Well, what, well, let me I'm ask saying, you a question. Lois is, Lerner, head of the whole operation that looks at all these nonprofits, knew about this a year before. For, according to the record now, you knew about this a year before they were denying it was happening. So why didn't she fire the people that did it? Why weren't steps taken to seriously discipline those who had done it? Why didn't she simply say, well, do it a little differently this time? Well, I, I am concerned that people weren't taking responsibility on behalf of this republic within our government, not well, being responsible to the organization, the IRS, but being responsible to the country. Well, and Chris, that's the question. First of all, we haven't gotten the final report yet, but the reports that I've read, I think the AP report that was out today was that Lerner ordered that the criteria and that the review process be changed immediately when she learned of it. But what and about the people that did it? Well, that's the good. Qu that's a decent question. But asking whether Barack Obama was using the IRS to go after his political enemies, which not you're doing, but which I'm starting to see on the right, is it doesn't make any well, sense. Well, I'm not going to go after this straw dog. Doug I'm Shulman. concerned about the government. In this right, case, Joy, the president is head of this government. If there's screw ups, if it's down in Albuquerque at the lowest level of a government, if somebody there speaking for Uncle Sam. That he's got to deal with it. Well, of course, and, but Doug Shulman, who was the head of the IRS at the time, I think the idea that he was engaged in some sort of conspiracy to go after Tea Party groups on a political basis, when he himself is a Republican and a George Bush appointee, who had already told the president that he was resigning from the, one of only two appointed political positions in the IRS, yeah. that he was resigning in November. So the idea that there's okay. some conspiracy, Doug Shulman being the head of it doesn't make sense. Okay, and let, me thing, back, let me go back to Chris, uh, Jenny Beth. Your view, because I believe what I've been able to understand this, is that the national effort to review these kinds of applications like yours. The national effort was tasked to the Cincinnati office, and they were handling all this across the country. This wasn't some little pigeonhole operation. This was the effort to do this fairly, and apparently they weren't doing it fairly. They were targeting the right. Your thoughts? They weren't doing it fairly, and is Lois Lerner a low-level employee? Because she knew about it last year. She knew about it in 2011, and then on Friday she's saying it was only low-level employees involved. So is she a low-level employee or not? And, well, she was on the and Federal listen, Election Commission. Well, I would say that's probably not a low-level job. And it doesn't, if it was a Bush appointee, an Obama appointee, I don't care who appointed them, whoever, the people who were responsible must be held accountable. This is not Republican, it's not Democrat, it's wrong to do, and it's about the people who are unelected, who have too much power, abusing the power that they well, have. We cannot the have one that. Good news, one the one good news, Jenny Beth, the good news is the IG caught them. Their own inspector general but, caught him. Chris, can I and just say two quick things? Thanks to the landmark things. legal for asking for that investigation to happen. Okay, th actually okay. three Go. quick things. The idea that the quick Tea job. Party Patriots and these other groups are nonpartisan, that they are social welfare organizations, is my other point, that the 501c4 process has attracted every low-level political consultant in the country to create a C4 when they saw the Tea Party coming. They weren't creating these groups to be nonpartisan and do policy. Everyone who's observed the Tea Party knows they were political. That's number one. And number two, I wonder if the same level of outrage existed back in 2004 when the IRS not went after and looked at applications, but audited the National Advance Association for the Advancement of Colored People, audited the NAACP, and launched a two-year investigation into them simply because the president of the NAACP, because one person made uh, comments that they thought were negative toward George W. Bush. I think it's great that we're going to look at the IRS process. Of course it should be looked at. If people did wrongdoing and it was clearly stupid to, to target groups in this way, they didn't understand the law, then yeah, people should be disciplined. But let's just try to make sure that we're just as outraged when the IRS goes after the NAACP. And I don't remember this level of outrage in 2004 before that election. And did the IRS in 2004 say we're going after them because they of comments audited, they made yes, toward the, the letter, president? Yep, the letter that then was sent to just the just NAACP wrong then. It's said just that Julian wrong then. Bond's statements, that Julian Bond's statements about George W. Bush and his opposition to the war, that was in the IRS letter that went to the okay. NAACP. They disclosed that they were going after Okay, I think one thing, statements. but I thank you, Joy, and I think everybody understands what you said, and Jenny as well. I think people all at home are going to make a judgment about this. Two wrongs don't make a right. Both are wrong. Thank you very much, Jenny Beth. Martin, thank you for coming on. Please come on again. Joy, as always, thank you. Thanks, I Chris. agree with you mostly. Up next, <laughs>